And back on CW11 with Home Track Heroes straight to the racetrack as we are just getting warmed up on our Buzz In Steakhouse Stinger 8 main event. As you see, 20 laps to go, 10 have already been completed. I want to remind you this segment is brought to you by Central Welding, where their mission of excellent service hasn't changed since 1975. Central Welding is a locally owned family business providing gases, safety, and welding supplies. They also uh, have an expert staff that make the difference. Find their 25 locations on at centralwelding.com. The number 40 car of Andrew Reiner's led this thing from the opening laps. You can see starting to have to uh, pay attention a little more to that intersection as they cut through. But uh, at Reiner's followed right now by the 18J of Jackson Beckel. Beckel running your leading candidate for Rookie of the Year. So you can finish this out, then he will be the 2021 uh, Stinger figure eight rookie of the year and that's an award that they can't take away from you and yeah I know the drivers look forward to that you know your first year after that you can't win it right now you see the 7d that's Brendan Lindbergh he's all over that 18 car and is uh, the 7d works on the outside of uh, the 18 of Beckel and they get a Still side by side now, <laughs> not giving up. Up front, it is still Andrew Reinders, like Tom mentioned, starting to get a little dicey in the intersection as Jackson Beckel still is hanging on. But boy, this could be over with pretty quick. Here comes the champ on the inside, the 7D, Brandon Lindbergh across the line. Andrew's up there thinking, boy, you two boys have at that all you want. I'm just going to try and lengthen uh, my lead out a little bit here and see if I can't pick up the W as we are going to be at the halfway point next time across the start finish. Finish line. Still a great battle with Brandon Lindbergh working the inside. Gets a little bit of a shove by Claiborne in the 43 there, trying to get him just a little bit bumped up, but halfway down, halfway to go. That's called a scratch and a sniff by That's the late Gary Cressy. <laughs> you know, and this is that case that I've talked about earlier in the year where they head to the intersection. If you're the car on the outside, you may not see that car coming from your left. Uh, and so you have to be very, very careful. Right now, there's those three drivers that are racing very, very hard, but they have to be very mindful of what could happen as they head down through that intersection twice each and every lap. Boy, they almost look like they're chained together on a Memorial Day program with fireworks coming up right after this and there could be before this is all said and done but Brandon Lindbergh working on the inside of Jackson Beckel Whoa. and boy like Tom that, that got close Tom's got it figured out and back up front is still all rinders in that number 40 car still hanging on to the first uh, spot but this battle for second is just about got wiped out there is that car right across the nose of the 7d of Lindbergh and I think Beckel said you know I'm just going to back out of this see if I can't regroup Jamin Claiborne now will take over the third spot in that gray number 43. Our race leader Reiners came in in third spot in the year-long battle for points. Um, probably his best night. As we said earlier in the show, sometimes rain is the great equalizer <laughs> of race cars. And right now Reiners doing a great job uh, pulling back away again from the 7D of Brandon Lindbergh, who's moved into that number two spot. Don't want to mess this up for Reinders, but he has kind of led this thing from the very get-go as uh, Brandon Lindbergh now has got Damon Claiborne all over. The best race of this entire race has been for that second spot between uh, Brandon Lindbergh, Damon Claiborne, and uh, Jackson Beckel earlier on in this one as he's kind of drifted to the back. We don't know if he may have something up with that 18J car, but uh, Andrew Reinders still looking good as we're going to come up and it looks like it might be Joseph Sturba or uh, uh, the 21 of Somerville. No, it wasn't 21, but looks like car, a uh, lap car is going to come into play here for our leader Reinders as they come out of turn number two. And, you know, our leader Reinders just ran his fastest lap of the race uh, right now, you know, at 22.933. So, you know, the racetrack's not drying up, just getting probably more and more comfortable because the, if there's ever been a year where you haven't raced in the rain, <laughs> This was it. Boy, it sure was. Second place is what you're seeing on your screen right now. Andrew Sturba, or excuse me, Joseph Sturba was the, the lap car that was in the way of our leader, the 40 of Andrew Reinders, and we'll pick that battle up here in just a second. But this one is too good not to miss the battle for second. It's a great race with Brandon Lindbergh by two car lengths now over the number 43 of Claiborne as they head down into turn number one. Eight laps to go. It'll be seven when they come across the line, but a lot of time. Uh, to get this thing to where it may end up being a good battle for the lead before it's all over. Well, you know, I was I laughing earlier in the years. I watched the uh, 
NASCAR race that they ran in the rain on the road course. Yeah. And I was watching their windshield wipers, and I'm thinking, here's all these engineers and bright people. They should have come to Evergreen Speedway. They would have learned more <laughs> about windshield wipers, defrosters, and how to yes. keep the window dry than they learned in that whole race because I could tell right away some of those guys didn't have a clue what they were doing. Yeah, it was uh, that was at the Circuit of the Americas exactly. at the road course outside of Austin, and, and uh, which they'll be back at this year, and hopefully the weather will be nice because that could be a fun race to watch. Meanwhile, back here at the Super Speedway of the West on a wet a Saturday night season championship number one will have five to go in about a half a lap here. Andrew Reinders in the 40 has led this thing from the get-go, still working to get around the 44 of Sturba to shove Sturba up out of the way on the top side, and Reinders will still hang on. He's done a great job keeping that 7D of Brandon Lindbergh in the 43 of oh, David Claiborne, oh. and look at this. What a break. Just as we talk about that, we have a new leader. Look at that. Damon Claiborne took the short way around, and the seven got into the back of him. So Andrew Reinders from first to third. Now look at it. Those two go spinning around. Lindbergh manages to uh, keep the nose straight on that. Back up front, Andrew Reinders. What a great deal. Oh, yeah. wow. Reinders kind of got tangled up with the down car, taken out of the lead, and go back the other way, go to the other end of the racetrack, and sur sure enough, and he was the beneficiary. As we see Brandon Lindbergh pulling into the infield, I'm guessing that he's having a discussion with one of the NASCAR Evergreen well, Speedway officials. You know, you might be on to something there. Yeah. So let's get it reset as they come across the line. We know for sure Andrew Reinders is still your leader and put Jackson Beckel back up into the second spot and uh, they'll put Brandon Lindbergh, drop him back down to third. So we're going to have two laps to go when uh, Reinders, who's had a great race, the race of the year for him in that number 40 car as they come out of turn number four and he'll have two to go right now they're running some of their best wow <laughs> <laughs> all that reiners has gone through and he almost got picked off at the intersection right now but lap 28 coming down um and that's you know so the lap 28 will be some of their best racing laps because they're running for their lives right now <laughs> as we'll see the white flag come out from John Peterson as they head on down and Reinders one more time through that intersection back one more time after this one and he'll pick up his win uh, for the 2021 season. Reinders now will take it out of turn number two get that thing straightened out and be a blur of white going into turn number three and speaking of blur of white that'll wrap up the last flag here comes the checkered one congratulations Andrew nice run and Jackson Beckel is going to pick up spot number two Brandon Lindbergh will win the championship for 2021 like Tom mentioned Jackson Beckel the rookie of the year Andrew Reinders your winner of the race will finish third in season points. Michaela Larson in fourth uh, for the season and Damon Claiborne. Will Andrew, on such a rainy, crummy night, you seem to get out in front and never look back. You just had that lead and maintained it the whole race long. Yeah, I just had to stay out front and never make any mistakes whatsoever in the turn one and turn three or anywhere in general and was able to keep it for, for the whole race and keep an eye on the intersection with uh, Zach and the 44 and uh, was able to survive the, the whole race and get my first win, which is awesome. Awesome. All right, first win for the 40 of Andrew Renders. Tell us who you need to thank tonight for being out at the racetrack. Uh, definitely my parents and uh, my sponsors, Robert and Elaine Smith. They've helped me out for every year throughout my career. And it's um, all the fans that showed up tonight. It's good to have them here and uh, put on another show another time. Jacko, you, you got to stop growing. You're almost telling me now. It's going to get a little embarrassing up here. But great season for you. So championship night, rookie of the year, Jackson Beckel, driver of the 18J. Make some noise. He's 15. He's 15 years old. So he's 15, so he has a few more years to catch up to me. Huh? All right. So, Jackson, tell us a little bit about this season coming in rookie of the year. I know you were topped up there in the points lead as well, but uh, still a great finish for you tonight, and it's always nice to have that rookie of the year honor. Yeah, at the beginning of the season, we were just coming here looking for rookie of the year, and then uh, started podium in races, started getting up there, and, you know, here we are. All right, Jackson, tell us who you need to thank for being out here tonight and all season long. Uh, John Bender, 
JBR Racing, Cox Wheels, Dawson, Brandon, Riddell Racing, all of them guys, they helped me this obstacle. Not used to getting that third place trophy, you almost grabbed the first place, huh? Well, I wasn't, I wasn't actually uh, planning on being up here today, uh, but uh, I'll take a third, I'll take a podium all day long. We're up here hanging out with you guys, heck yeah. So as it is 2021 championship night number one, you have the third place trophy. We also have something else for you to hold on to there. There we go. 2021 champion in the Stingray division, it's the 70, Brandon Lindbergh. So Brandon, tell us a little bit what this championship means to you this season. Oh, I, I can't thank all the guys that are helping me all year enough. Man, I've never won a championship. I've been this close. I've lost by a point. I've lost by five points, and I've never won one. And, and it's just so exciting to be up here and have a championship. And all the people backing me, it really started off at the preseason with uh, Steve and Dawson just brainstorming. And they decided to put me in the car for the year and kept it maintained, gave me a rocket ship, and get run into and they they hop right on it help me fix it up get it all ready for the next race and man I, I i can't thank them enough for putting me out here and everybody that's helped me along the way how about a big round of applause your 2021 champion driver of the 70 brandon Lindbergh. I forgot to thank my sponsors also. Uh, I'd like to thank Hager. He bought me my uh, first champion or first dinner as a champion tonight. Uh, Rick Hager Motorsports. Um, Mom and Mike have helped me a lot this year. My wife and son for letting me come out here and supporting me in the rain. And uh, uh, Brandy Hood Promotions for sure. She did all the the video you guys see online. Um, all the edit, you know, she 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 puts all the all the GoPros in all these cars and gives you guys all the footage to watch and she does a really good job and two and a half men barbecue they've been keeping my belly full during the races so it's awesome <laughs> and thank you greg thank you angel of the winds for being our uh, presenter of our victory platform congratulations to one of the cool guys out in, in the in the pits brandon Lindbergh, on your championship and now we get to wrap up the 2021 season for our nascar street stocks we've watched a lot of these races this year this field and and we've talked about it you know to where we're kind of tired of hearing about it but it's still needs to be talked about because of the improvement of this division in 2021 well and i i know there's some more cars that are going to be added to it there are people out there already wheeling and dealing to get cars that's going to make this division extremely tough next year um you know and you can just see different champions every year there's a reason for that all right we're going to bring you the lineup for the final race for 2021 for our street stocks and on the front row brought to you by afc forestry the 22 of kenny erickson outside of kenny in the 21 is going to be doug poirier in the 19 is jake grant jake brought to you by stan's tap house, stein's tap house i'm sorry and outside of jake in the number 25 bruce pendergrass Brought to you by Cheyenne Scale Company. In the third row, it's the 14 car of Colin Hubbard. Uh, Hubbard sponsored by the Lawn Doctor. And outside of Hubbard in the 45 car, it's Nick Beecher, the Beecher Motorsports Special. In row four, the defending champion, number one car, Ted Lindgren, Emerald City, Harley Davidson. And outside of him, the current points leader, the 41 car, the Interstate Batteries, number 41 of Mark Hubbard. And then we go back to the next row in the number 49, brought to you by Cuz Septic Service out of Arlington. That's Calvin Miller outside of Calvin in the 51. Jeff Watson, sponsored by Stack Design and Construction. In the 16, all about transmission and automotive, sponsors Scott Perkins outside of Scott in the number 17. Brought to you by PMS Power Decals is Zach Bristol. And rounding out the field in the number five Chevrolet is Travis Blackwood. So there you go. 30 laps coming up. And it's going to wrap up a rainy night in uh, Monroe, Washington. It's going to be interesting to see 16 car Scott Perkins, a former hockey player. So he's kind of used to that water, but it's frozen water. So it be interesting to see how he does in this 30 <laughs> lap main event. You can see the lights on in the Speedway Chevrolet pace car. Man, it's so cool to have, you know, the 
uh, Speedway. Chevrolet so involved here yes. at our Speedway, and I'm sure they'll be back next year, and we'll be able to get some good late model racing going on. Should have been the Central Welding 125 tonight, but Mother Nature had a different idea. It sure because did. Because there is no way late models would have uh, been able to make it through it. But it'll be Poyer and Erickson in that front row, bringing them on down to the green flag. All right, pace car pulls off, and that gives control of the field to the 22 of Kenny Erickson as they take it up out of turn number four. These cars will spend a fair amount of time, A, kicking up some water, and B, probably more important than A, trying to find a dry place to uh, get just a little bit of traction to uh, go forward. But uh, Kenny Erickson with a great start will lead this thing going down into turn number three. We go back to Grant in the 19 and the 21 car of uh, Poyer looks in, in good in that third spot as we get one down and 29 to go. They're looking to try and do this thing three wide, and while it's possible, <laughs> it, it could be an ugly night. You can see him right there uh, on the high side, Hubbard in that 41 car, already committed to that upper groove. There's two things that are going to do that. He knows it's going to be a, just a little bit drier up there, but he's also starting in the back, got to work his way forward. That's not likely that's going to happen on the bottom. You know, they used to call bot people who race on the bottom catfish, and <laughs> as much water as they're out there, there may be actually some catfish located in turn one or two. If you remember back when we were showing you the heat races for the NASCAR street stocks, we spent a fair amount of time uh, noticing that the 45 of Nick Beecher, that car just, it, it's almost thinking it's on a dry track because I'm just so impressed how he can put that thing anywhere he wants to go. Same way with 41 of Hubbard as uh, he's going to be working that top side. But man, look at Nick Beecher just grabbing that inside coming out of two. Working all over that rear bumper of the 19 car of Jake Grant. Grant, that's been a slow progression this year. You know, they fought that car and fought that car, and I know they're not happy with it, but you're starting to see more and more top four, top five positions, you know, finishes for that car. I'm going to guess that this winter they'll take that thing apart, and he's going to be a tough one come next year. Good side-by-side -side battle just there for a microsecond coming out of turn number two between the 41 and Hubbard and the 45 of Beecher. Nick now taking the low line coming out of turn number four. We we'll, should put oh, I thought we were going to be able to put him up into the second spot, but Jake Grant in the 19 just doing a great job hanging on to it, but uh, still just amazed by the run of that 45. Well, right now the spotters are telling their drivers patience, patience, and if you know race car drivers, they don't have a lot of patience and they don't follow direction any better than they have patience. So right now they're just doing it. But, you know, as I said, they're going to have to talk their way through this because you, right now that 45 car wants that lead so bad. He's got his elbows up. He is driving the crap out of that thing <laughs> and he wants to drive it harder. It just won't hook up because the racetrack is so wet. Nick Beecher now in that second spot, hanging on deep down on the bottom. Let's see if he can get it to stick as he washes up just a little bit. And Kenny Erickson does a nice job at the top of the turn. Will still hang on, but Jake Grant looking to split it down the middle. I don't think he's going to be able to pull that off. Mark Hubbard in the 41 has just pretty much had the points lead all season long, looking like he's going to come out of this as your champion for 2021. But back up front, Nick Beecher now down on the bottom as we are finishing up lap number seven. We've got 8.22 to go. Nick Beecher working good down on the inside as we've got a car spinner. Oh, no, the champ from last year just all out of shape. So we'll see what happened as we've got a couple of different replays to show you from uh, – what brought out the first caution with eight laps into it, Ted Lindgren in the number one machine. Let's go check out and see how this all came about. You can see that nice, clean, clear windshield in there. He can kind of see what he's doing in contrast to the events we've seen earlier tonight, but you can see gauges, his hands, the tack right there on his right-hand side. He's even got a uh, one of those little trees to make it smell nicer in there. <laughs> All right, we, we see Ted, him trying to work his way out of that. We're going to take a break. We've got more coming back, wrapping it up here at uh, Monroe from CW11.